So to start off, I'm going to add an avatar. This avatar isn't available from the um, Clo assets that, that they give you, but it is free on the Clo Connect site. So you can download this avatar Yuna. And then I'm going to apply a size 10. For now, let's go size 8 out of the Missy Straight. Just by double clicking that size, it applies it automatically. I'm going to close up the library. Okay, here's our size 8. And we want to now make a simple pattern using our polygon rectangle tool. And the pattern size that I want is going to be about the length of the full avatar and almost to the width of the arm span. So about like this. I'm going to turn this textile view back to normal. And notice how I have my 2D window. The fabric display is on transparent, so I can see the silhouette of my avatar behind that. This is going to be key, and it's very important. I always work like that. Now we need to bring a, an image into this um, area. And this is a whole other lesson of adding graphics, but there's a couple ways I can do this. One, I can go right to my library and whatever PNG or G JPEG I have in here, I can just click and drag it onto the pattern and it will show up. But I want a pattern and a fabric specifically for this sloper that I want to trace off. So how I'm going to do that is open my object browser and I'm going to select this fabric. And I'm going to say just copy it. So I have two different ones. This one already has this fabric one applied to it. So this is the fabric I want to be in for a second. I'm going to close up this object browser. Now to get my image in here, I know I have this image on my desktop right here. And if I wanted it to be in my library, all I would need to do is add it to a folder that is already linked to my library. So to do that, I'm going to open up this folder that I know is in there, my Clo class files, and I'm going to put it in my sample graphics folder. Then when I go to my Clo class files and down to sample graphics, it's in there. I can just click and drag that. It's going to appear on my fabric. Now the other way I can do this is by adding a graphic. So this is our add graphic tool or just our regular graphic tool. When you click on this tool, it's going to bring up a navigation box so you can go anywhere on your device to choose the graphic you want to add. And I know that I already put this into Clo 3D in my class files, in my sample graphics, and there it is. So I can apply that to this fabric, and now I have to click, left click once to apply it. And that's going to apply a single instance of it. And that's fine. Either way is fine. Um, we need to scale this. So after I applied it using the graphic tool, this little t-shirt with a grid, a check grid, um, I need to scale it. So it brought up the scaling um, control already automatically when I dropped this graphic in there. But if you had just clicked and dragged that in there, you get this box texture map types. You want it to just be a texture because that means it's just the visual black and white rendering. There's no um, surface roughness applied to it. Just choose texture. 
And if you wanted to scale this, we would need to get our edit texture tool right here. So I'm going to delete the graphic that I have, that single instance. I'm going to use the edit texture tool because this is a texture we added to our fabric. Remember, that's just the appearance, the color value, whatever pattern we have applied to the surface. And this is going to allow me now to scale using these tools. I don't want to twist it. That's something I don't want to do. And you twist it by pulling, clicking and dragging on one of these top or bottom arrows. It's essentially the grain of the texture that you're moving around. So I'm going to command Z back to my very up, straight up and down perpendicular on the X and Y axis. I need this to be straight up and down. I do want to start by scaling this though. So while I'm in this texture, edit texture tool, I can click on this to select it. That's how I get these tools to become active. This control right here is how you scale this image or texture you've, you've applied up and down. So by clicking and dragging on this, this diagonal line in the center, I'm giving it a proportional scale up and down. When you do either one of these, it's just scaling it in one direction. So you don't want to do that because these slopers are all ready to scale. And I want to um, use this center point of this grain line, this direction line of my texture, to reposition my images so they are on the body the silhouette that I can see in my 2D window. And what I'm going to do is go back and forth scaling this until I think it's the right size for the avatar. And this has seam allowance applied to it, which we are going to not include seam allowance. So what I'm looking at is this seam line right here in the actual finished line of the garment. So that's the size I want to be considering. I also want to be considering um, the height where I'm placing this. Remember that this seam line should not be on the very outer edge of the silhouette. I need some space up here. This neck looks a little bit tight to me, so likely that will have to be a different shape, but we'll do that later. I'm also looking at where this waistline is hitting. The natural waist on here, the smallest part, right, is here. And so that means that this will come all the way about to right there. It's a little bit lower, so we might have to move that up in a minute. This armhole, it will fit right under that, that armhole, but I'm thinking we need just a slight bit bigger. In, in my experience, it is, um, oops, it's hard to get a little, <laughs> it's like very easily In my experience, what I was just saying is that um, you want to start air on being a little bit bigger. That's going to be an easier thing to fix. And so let's, maybe that's too big. Let's so go back and forth with your scaling tool and your placement tool. Remember, you don't want to rotate it by using either one of these, but you want to move it with that center one. And I'm trying to line up my center front line, the green line here on the sloper, 
with the center line of my avatar silhouette. So this looks about okay to me. Let's start here and I'm going to get out of my edit texture tool. What we're going to do to get a pattern off of this right now, this is not a pattern yet. So I'm going to create a pattern from this image. We can do one of two things. We can use the polygon tool, the regular, pattern creating tool to click and draw this shape out and then it's just automatically a pattern created for us or I can use the polygon line tool that first one to create an internal line and then we just have to convert it to a pattern after that either way you're gonna have to trace off this shape I like to use just the regular pattern tool, the polygon line tool, because it takes one step out of the process. It's a little bit quicker. So why not? We are only going to trace off a half of this sloper because we want it to be exactly symmetrical. Just like always, we would take information from one side and then mirror it to the other side to be completely perfect. So I'm going to start at center front with my trace off. I'm going to left click once. I'm going to click and drag here to get a shape of a neck line. And this is a little bit off here, right? But I know that it's it looks pretty tight, so I'm just going to be a little generous with this. And you can start right on the line, but you'll just probably have to make some edits later. Because that last line was a curved line, I clicked and dragged to get that curve. I need to come back to this point and left click to get my straight line again. I'm going to left click at the end of the shoulder. And you can do this in one swoop or you can click and do it in a couple clicks. But now if I left click and drag, I can get the curvature I want for this armhole. If you don't get it exactly right the first time, that's fine. You can always edit the curvature later with the Edit Curve tool. And I'm going to come back here to this underarm segment point to get my straight line again for this side seam. Click at the bottom of it. This is a straight segment right here. And you don't have to follow this bottom line of the waistline. We're going to follow the dart. So right at the vanishing point of the dart, coming right back to the waistline. And this is so close to being a straight line. You can do a straight line if you want, or give it a slight curve. And close it up, finish it up by coming back to your original segment point. And it's going to think about it for a second, but after it generates the pattern, you have a half of a sloper right here. So with hotkey A for our transform pattern tool, our selection tool, I'm going to grab that and just bring it off of our sloper image. But notice here, the fabric that it used to create this pattern, to generate the pattern, it's using the fabric that we applied this image to. And I don't want that. I want just the regular fabric. So remember when we used the copy function to create another fabric, right? We need to go back to that. This is the reason why we did that. <clears throat> so with this selected, this pattern piece that we just created, with it selected, I can assign this other fabric that's just clear, no image applied to it, no pattern or texture. This is the assign button, and I'm going to just click that. We could also just click and drag the fabric over to the pattern piece, and it would apply it to that pattern piece also. So we have our front sloper now, our front bodice, half of it anyway and we need to unfold it with symmetric editing. 
So we're going to right click on the center front segment, unfold with symmetric editing and sewing, and there's our full pattern. We also need our back piece. Normally I'll use the front pattern that I've created. If I'm drawing a pattern from scratch, I'll just use that to start my back pattern. But we have the back sloper already drawn out. I'm just going to trace it again, just like we did for the front. Starting at center back, I'm going to travel that center back neckline along the shoulder line. And if you, if you find that the software is doing that snap to grid situation and you can't get exactly on the point that you want, zoom in a little closer and it'll, it will give you more control over where you place things. Again, don't, um, you want to just trace the dark legs. That's the information that we're after. down the side seam to this first dart leg of a waist dart on the back. And then coming back to the original point and here's our back. We want to put this other fabric on here as well and I'm just going to click on this fabric now because when we have this selected anything we create from now on will be made using that fabric that plain fabric so for now I can get this out of the way and you can do it now or later but this sleeve will go into this bodice, obviously. Um, but for now, we're just going to do the bodice and simulate that and see how it looks. I'm going to keep this back with a seam down center back. So if I wanted to make a symmetric copy of this, I could just press Command D. And I would have my other side. And I'm going to now adjust or arrange my patterns. Let me close this up for more room. I can now arrange my patterns that we just created on the silhouette in the 2D window. Um, just because this is telling when we're trying to edit things to fit better. And let's get this out of the way. I'm going to right click and freeze this so it doesn't move when we simulate. It's not going to drop to the ground, but I am going to keep it around just for a little bit, just in case. Now I can, um, over here in the 3D toolbar, there's a rearrange 2D. And what that does, this little exploded quadrant of a shirt, that icon, that tool, it sets up your patterns exactly like you have it in the 2D window. And we need to arrange this before we simulate. So I'm going to select all, get them out of the way, get my arrangement points by shift F or going up to my vertical toggle menu. And I'm going to place the front first. This looks like our best option. Remember, if you have too much curvature happening on this pattern piece, you can go in the property editor while the pattern piece is selected and just increase this offset number a little bit. And I'm also going to um, raise this up. 
Oh, I see it selected everything because I had everything selected. That's fine. We can just move these over a little bit. All right. And these darts aren't automatically sewn because they weren't darts created by the system or the software. They were created by us tracing them off. So it's just a shape at this point. It's not a dart. So we need to sew these darts up. These are simple segments. There are no complicated or complex segments, meaning segment points within. So we can use our segment sewing tool for all of this. I'm going to start by sewing all of the dart legs together. So that's everything. Then I'm going to stitch the side seams together. And it does it for you for the other side because these are all symmetrically, symmetrically linked. This is why it helps to have the patterns arranged this way. So I purposely put my front right on the front of the, of the silhouette and then I put the wearer's left back right next to my wearer's left front. So I know that these two seams go together, these two shoulders go together, and vice versa. Now with this, we can use either the um, multiple or one to multiple with our segment sewing, meaning I would click once with my tick mark close to the neck and my HPS. I would click once and then hold shift to do multiple selections to distribute that evenly into that. And I would want to start on this side because we started the, the sewing relation at center or HPS. I need to do the same for the other shoulder seam. So I would hold shift still and click once and click again. Okay, and let's stitch our center back up. So that'll be a seam at center back, which we would likely have a zipper there if we were making the rest of a dress. But we can just stitch it together for now and it will it will do what we need it to. So let's simulate at this point by pressing spacebar or this arrow up here. And that's an okay fit, but it definitely needs some adjustments. Now I want to look at the fit map really quick to see if the waist is too tight, which doesn't look like it is. That's great, so I'm going to turn that off. And the neck look, looks like it's fitting pretty well. We have a little bit too much happening around the bust. The waist fits pretty well, but up here we've got a little too much happening. Um, so I'm going to go back to my transparent view so I can see where my dart points are hitting on this avatar. So you could do this essentially for any size that you create or you brought in for an avatar. So your custom sizes or a client that you're working for and you could make a sloper for this exact size. And that's essentially what we're doing here. We're taking that base sloper shape that we brought in as a PNG and we're making a sloper that fits the way we want it to fit for size eight, ASTM Missy Straight size eight. So I can see now that the side needs to come in a lot. Um, so at this point I would get my edit pattern tool and start working. Uh, not only are we going to adjust seam lines, but 
we can also check the length that we are sewing to one another. So this is a full nine inches on this side, and we've got 8.64. I would want to make those two lines that share a sewing operation match each other. And let's do, I would make this side a little longer because while, hmm, actually maybe we would want it to go up a little bit. So I'm going to right click on this line, say change length. Remember, we can just use our edit pattern tool to click this segment point and move it upward manually and make sure we get close to the number here. We can also do it this way by right clicking and choosing change length. And I want nine inches. So that's what the other segment is. Here's the way you want to um, manipulate this though. See this arrow over here in our preview, our 2D window. This is the direction. It's asking you to choose a direction of where to add this extra amount of fabric. If it were going the other way, you would just change it to the opposite. At the bottom, no, we wanted it to go to the top. You could also center it, give a little bit to the top, a little bit to the bottom. So let's keep it that way. I'm gonna accept that. And I'm going to simulate to apply those changes. And we would do that for all seams that sew together. So if we have 5.61 for the front shoulder seam, I'm going to hold shift to select both of these for the back seam. We have a total of 5.94. Now we want to make this. Um, Actually, let's do Let's make this a little bit smaller. So I can see how much I'm taking away. If I was at 5.94 and I need to get to 5.6, I know I need to lose about 0.3 inches here. And that's close enough. You would want to be exact down to the hundredth. If you were making a sloper for a permanent collection of slopers, you really want to spend the time to be exact. I know this is big right here on this upper torso area. So I'm going to bring this back or this front side in a little bit. Normally for a standard fitting um, shoulder seam, it's around four and a half to five inches. So likely we would end up bringing this down. The length of it to something less. So then we would need to change this also. So we went to 4.68 here. Let's just go with that for now. Let's give this a little bit more of an appropriate curve for the back neckline. I'm going to simulate to make those changes. Okay, now let's bring in this side. And notice when I changed the front bodice, 
I only moved that segment point because I didn't want to change the entire side seam. The waist is already close to a comfortable fit. I might do that just a tiny bit on the back here before I change just this upper area, the width of this upper area. And let's simulate to see what that looks like. Okay. And I think I want to take some out of the center of this back. I would make this a little bit bigger because if you look at what's happening in the back of that bodice right there. If I bring this back down, see how we have so much bagginess right here. We need some of that taken out. And by making this back dart a little bit bigger, it's going to take more material out. Not enough really, but it will help. I'm going to do this a little bit and this also. So that's closer. It seems like um, starting with a little bit smaller of when we were uh, tracing off this original shape scaling it down just a little tiny bit I think would have started us out in a better spot obviously um, then one way you can sort of make sure that you're getting a close fit to this is by making when we were scaling this it's by either using the point of measure tool this tool and saying click and double click to end it and you can say 5.4 that's what that is um, reading we want that shoulder to be 4.5 or whatever you wanted it to be I know I need a shoulder that's going to be 4.5 that's one way that you can scale your piece to fit a certain POM point of measure so by doing this and then editing that POM down to 4.5, that's the length of the shoulder seam that you know that you would need. So you would just scale this shape of your sloper to match that at the shoulder seam. So you would go back and forth until you were happy with this. Let's see the um, multicolor will tell us what the shoulder seam and the side seams are doing. Maybe if they were off a little bit more than that, you would take a little bit more off the waist line of the front versus the back to even it out a little bit. And same for the shoulder. Maybe the shoulder seam was rolling towards the back a little bit more than you would like. So you can add or take away from whatever pattern you would need to to correct that. I would also want to um, change the position of these darts. So find the apex of the avatar and you can mark it just like we did with, um, or I don't think we did in this video, but marking the apex like so. 
I like using the internal tool for this instead of the baseline tool. And I want to get the internal ellipse tool to make a circle, which allows you to easily rearrange it. Oops. And I'll get the transform pattern tool so I can select all of that internal line. And I can move it while I'm looking at it in the 3D window until I'm happy with the position where I think the apex is, which remember the apex is the furthest most point of the bust, the biggest area that we are trying to fit with all of these shaping elements like darts and seams and stuff. So let's say a little bit more out actually. So I would say the apex is right there for this avatar. That would mean our dart needs to point directly to that. And we also want to back off about an inch or so, maybe a half inch. And once we get close enough and happy with that, we would then um, see it in a, a lesser PD, a, more, a higher quality, lower number particle distance, and you would get a nicer drape. Like these points always look very angular until you get it into a higher quality PD. So this still wants some more adjusting. Like the armholes are coming in or out too far on the arm and the fit is depending on what you are wanting maybe it's a loose fit maybe it's very comfortable or maybe you want it very fitted so your slopers that you're making are going to be very nuanced but let's say we were happy with this and we wanted to keep this as a sloper that we can bring in at any point to use to create another garment. If our design was close to this starting point, we would then use this as the starting point to design that. And it's much easier if you save this as a sloper instead of drawing this every single time. So what you would do, and you don't even have to select anything, it's not like you need to select this, this is the only um, thing that we have in our file except this. So before you save this as a sloper, you would want to get rid of this piece, this pattern piece that we brought in our PNG with. And then once you're down to the only pattern that you need to save, that's the only thing in addition to your avatar, but you would go to File, Save As, Pattern. This is going to create a ZPAC file, a .zpac, and I would save it as um, size 8 sloper, and I would say bodice sloper. Save it wherever you want it to save, like desktop or your Clo 3 d and save and then you can bring that in anytime add a garment desktop here is so weird oh i think i changed it accidentally garment file z pack saved as a z-pack and I would go to add garment 
not a project because if I'm adding a project, you have to have a Z PRJ, Z project file. Garment is the one we saved it as, the Z pack right here. Here's our PNG that it automated and it generated a preview of it for us, which is great. But that's just the PNG, it's just an image of it. This is the actual garment file. I want to add it to the workspace. You can choose the location of it if you like. And maintain everything, yes. And now we have another bodice. So that's how you open up your saved garments, your pattern files, Z packs. All right, and that is how you um, create a pattern from a sloper image or a digital pattern, just an image of a digital pattern. So you could do this literally with any image of a pattern. Um, and then remember, if you need to scale it up and down a little bit, use this transform pattern tool in the bounding box and you could say, I need this a tiny bit bigger, or I need everything a little bit smaller. That's a quick adjustment overall.